What's up guys and gals, it's your host with the most grievers always, bringing you guys the latest chapter review for the next piece of One Piece. Chapter 1089, entitled Under Siege. Now everyone's already talked about this chapter and I apologize for how late uh, all my videos have been this week and they're going to continue to be late uh, going into next week. But nonetheless, uh, chapter 1089, the reason this one got pushed outside the other ones is not a whole lot to talk about it realistically uh everyone else covered it far better than i could and yes we can speculate about a bunch of stuff and i like the chapter and everything but realistically there was no super crazy reveal or a big fight or anything like that where uh after the greatness that was gop the fist and all his greatness going down which some people are still for some reason thinking that garp is not top tier for some reason i don't get those people anyways we're finally back with the straw hats which is that's nice, that's kind of cool, right? Um, and they've off-screen defeated the Seraphim, got Vegapunk back, and uh, there with York, who's like crying to the girl, saying, SAVE ME! Uh, it's York, right? Like, I did really still do not care about Egghead, the arc. So, um, and it was pointed out that Robin is the only straw hat not seen in this photo. Rob Lucci is. We don't see any of the Seraphim. Dr. Vegapunk is there, uh, but they have uh, successfully, apparently, won the island, all that stuff. The call went to the Gorosei, and they were all like, yes, all right, we'll make you a celestial dragon, and yes, we'll do this, because they want the mother flame. They want the technology, or the, the weapon itself, or mass produce, whatever. They want that power. They want more of that power. Whether a lot of people are saying it's basically a recreation of one of the ancient weapons, uh, whatever this does, it basically simulates the same idea, and they want it. The Gorosei and Eam want it, right? Uh, and she's like, yeah, what's the big idea, blah, 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 and she's going through, because I already complained about this, I'm like, for Vegapunk, I know he split himself into multiple androids and all this stuff, but, like, Vegapunk is very disappointing as one of the, stu like, stupidest geniuses I've ever seen in my life, you know? This guy is no, uh, Light Yagami or, or L, he's no, uh, detective, um, he's no... I don't know, Rick Sanchez, uh, who else Who else is a mad genius? He's no Mayuri, he's no Kisuke, he's no, he's none of these people, right? He realistically has been nothing but naive and just blindsided by the most obvious things. Plus, then one of his own androids has been even more so. The Gorosei were never actually going to go along with it, they were going to get the technology, blah blah blah, and they were going to be like, yeah, done. Once they got the technology or could figure some other way out, they were, they, they were going to slice and dice. They were never going to actually agree to that. They were going to do it for now to keep in her good graces. And the fact that she couldn't see that, I mean, I pointed that out when that was her big reveal chapter. It's like, this is ridiculous. So I am glad though that we sped up. Some people are going to be really upset that we off screen all this stuff, right? And I'm like, no, I can't stand Egghead. Let's get the f off this island, please. Uh, let's get out of this arc and into something fun. So, which once again we had with Gob. Um, so, I really want to get into the next real arc with Luffy and the gang. So, uh, the fact that they off screen the rest of the Seraphim fights and that they already dealt with the York and Vegapunk situation and the other CP0 agent or the CP5 and 6 are there or 4 and 5 are there. Anyway, the fact that all that's already been taken care of, blah, blah, blah. Fan fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. And it's a good final shot that they're all just like. Yeah, so we have uh, her hostage and stuff like that. So you guys had no idea what was going on in here. Uh, right before that, we had Kizaru and uh, Sentamaro having some banter back and forth. We have a bunch of Vice Admirals, a lot of whom I don't think I've ever seen before. Some of their designs look really cool. Uh, but th this is bigger than a Buster Call. They're like, there's there's like 200 battleships or something like that. Or 20 battleships, sorry. The 200, that'd be even more insane. But there's like, instead of 5, there's like 20 and not, there's not like five vice admirals, there's nine or ten vice admirals. And they have another admiral. Now they're not counting, of course, thing, uh, our, our uh, Saint, what's, what's his name, Saturn? Saint Saturn? Yeah, 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 Saint Saturn. So Saint Saturn's here and all that stuff. One of the gores, one of the elder stars is here and stuff. Um, there's a lot of back and forth with that stuff, but at the end of the day, and Kizaru has clearly had his fruit for a very, very long time, because we see him as a young man. Sentamaru as a young boy, uh, remembering when, uh, Vegapunk was, obviously, you can see Vegapunk is much younger too. So, Kizaru has had his fruit for many decades at this point, by the looks of it, and we get a little bit of the history there. 
Kizaru also admits that he's more of a wheel in a in the cog. He's a uh, he's just a gear. He is a uh, what, what's the way he puts it? Basically, he just follows orders. He's a soldier, and he just does what he's told. His hands are tied. You know, the orders come down, and he executes them. That's basically the thing. Now, the resulting that puts some things into perspective for a lot of people in the power scaling community because I did see one or two people mention how in God's green earth how is Kizaru ever going to be justified having conquer Saki if that's his attitude and my my sort of take on this is that the admirals don't technically need conquer Saki I'm just putting it out there that by the end of series and stuff, you know, the only ones who need Conqueror's Hockey are going to be the literal top tiers. For example, Blackbeard has never displayed it himself either. And he's a Yonko, right? So the idea that uh, Kizaru with this whole, I just do what I'm told, I'm no, I'm no Conqueror, I'm no King, I'm no Emperor sort of idea, even though he's an Admiral and he's like, that's as far as his ambition's going to take him. Uh, I, there are things to be said for that. Once again, Sengoku and Garp, two Marines to be confirmed to have the Conqueror's Hockey, but Garp also defies the Marines and the governments and does whatever he feels like at any given turn. He does not fight for the Celestial Dragons, and he openly defies them at times. Uh, and Sengoku while still following the rules, followed his own sense of justice to the letter and blatantly disagreed when things didn't go their way to save face and stuff like the Marine Ford, the, the Impel Down incident and stuff like that, right? So there's arguments for those two. Uh, Akainu, for example, is probably a good example of someone who will most likely be revealed to, if any of the current admirals are going to have Conqueror's Hockey, it's going to be Akainu. I could see how Kiji not having it due to his lazy justice, uh, that doesn't make him weak or a bad character. It just means that they're not built for that, right? Their job isn't to be on the top, to be a king, right? So you got to remember, it's all based in willpower and it's all born that way sort of idea, right? So, you know, there is there's an argument for it, but I'm not that dismayed by it. Kizaru is still a monster of a combatant and stuff like that. And I don't get with the nitty gritty. The fact of the matter is he's still an admiral. He's one of the OG admirals who I put more respect on than the new generation. And But he's from both. And in all honesty, he's still like he's still a top tier fighter. So I, I don't think that a lot of people are seemingly worried about that line and how they're going to justify conquerors. And I'm going to say, Kizaru's never going to be revealed to ever have conquerors, but that's not going to make him weak. It just means he's never going to be number one, most likely, at best. That's... You know, but did anybody actually think that uh, that our lovely Borsalino was ever going to be top one in the verse? I mean, good for you if you have that agenda, but nah. I, I mean, I like Kizaru, but I, I never really held out hope that he was going to be top one. So, uh, anyways, uh, the other part of the chapter, of course, was the uh, the meter or the three and a half feet, roughly three point three or what's three point two, whatever. Uh, the ocean, because of that giant mother flame ancient weapon attack uh, by Vegapunk's technology getting rid of the Kingdom of Lu Lucia, it did something that everybody's mentioned, uh, and he's lobbying, right? The big hole and stuff like that, so that's why people are saying clearly this technology wasn't there before, but it's based in technology Vegapunk admits. The only reason he's 500 years in the future is because he had a basis to work off of, of newer age technology, right? So once again, how much of a genius is he really? He's definitely smart, but the, the way they painted him, the truth is a little more lackluster, right? He already had the building blocks. He just needed to figure out how to put them back together. Uh, he didn't invent the building blocks, as it were. So there is an argument for that, for sure. But the fact of the matter is, is that Eni's Lobby most likely an attack by one of the ancient weapons, and that's why Eni's Lobby is the way it is. And I'm sure that caused devastation when it happened, and now the same sort of thing has happened. The hole hasn't filled in. It's a circular waterfall where the kingdom used to be. As a result, the, the ocean level around the world rose by one meter. Now, when you first think about it, one meter. One meter is about three feet, a little over three feet. So 
I'm almost, uh, I'm shorter than six feet, but it's about half my height, give or take. It, it's a little over half of my height, so it'd be up to here on me somewhere, right? Um, that doesn't sound so significant at first. But think about three feet in your of water in your house from floor level. Think about three feet when you're standing on the beach. Think about three feet, like that's a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when we're talking the entire world, three feet increase in height, man oh man, like that's just nuts. And we get to see everyone reacting to this. We actually do get a shot of Iceberg again and stuff like that in Water 7. We get uh, we get Makino with, uh, with, of course, the true child of Shanks. Get out of here, singing girl, you're weird. Um, but the true child of Shanks is still chilling with his mom on, uh, you know, in the hometown. Uh, and we do see some reactions from some other people. We see Adonkov and people like that. So basically they just go over the entire devastation of how that happened and how it changed the seas and stuff like that, right? So, but a lot of people have covered that more in depth than I did. So it's funny, this whole review, I've been going from the end of the chapter, going backwards pretty much. But that's really all I wanted to cover. There's not a whole lot that nobody else has covered and there's nothing like, okay, guys, I know this might sound crazy, but bear with me. We're going to think about this and I've got an idea, you know, or this proves my point 100%. Like, no, everything here was pretty much straightforward. We're back with the straw hats. I think everybody's happy about it. So, yeah, I don't know anybody who didn't like the chapter, but if you did, let me know because that's the end of my review. I liked it. What did you guys think? Like, comment, and subscribe as always, and we'll see you guys back next time for the next piece of One Piece. Probably be another late review, of course, but uh, hopefully not as late as this one. But that's it from me, guys. Sayonara.